Hey everybody, it's Dan and Phil here, and this week we're back with Elio and Gino checking out their American cars. Two Mustangs, 69 and a 70 Mustang, both fastbacks and both bloody brilliant. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, Stan here, welcome back to Aussie Garage. Back here with Elio again this week, and uh, we're talking about his Mustang. Mate, tell us a little bit about this one. No, oh, it's a 69 Mac 1, originally from the US, bought through Queensland in 2008. Gino bought it in, and I purchased off of him in 2018. Yeah, no worries, so um, I guess there wasn't much to do to it at that point? Was it in pretty much the condition that it's in now? Oh, it's practically what you've seen it, I've just tuned a few little things on it, like I gave the bonnet a new paint job because it originally had the cables that go down to, to protect the bonnet from yep. lifting up and they scratches all the front of it. So I repainted that. Yep. No, as you see it is, it, that's, it, that's as it is. Yeah. No worries, so you said that Gino bought this one originally. So did he have to do anything to it? Apparently when Gino got it, he fitted uh, Cobra Jet disc brakes to it because this car came out with four, four wheel drum brakes. Oh right. And he had fitted disc brakes to it to help it to stop a little bit better. But no, I've done a lot of work on it since we've had it. Like I've redid the whole braking system from front to back, front suspension, put a new gear stick in it because the original one was like a spoon in custard. Yep. So I put a brand new gear stick in it. And apart from that, yeah, she's pretty well right now. Did a little bit of work under the engine bay just to dress it up, make it look a little bit more prettier. No, the rest of it as it is. Do you guys know um, he, where it came from in the States, that sort of thing? Funny that, I'll show you something about that. When Gino bought the car in in 2008, and we took the front uh, passenger door off to redo the hinges, it actually had that inside oh, wow. the door. It's a parking ticket. Yeah, Washington yeah. Athletic Club. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I've kept that, and just a little bit of history about the car. So what, what's, what colour is it? I mean, it's just a silver. Uh, Do you know what the silver is called, this one? got no idea. It, we, I've had a guy in Malaga have a look at the car, and he reckons it's basically the same colour as uh, BF Falcon silver, okay. a little bit brighter, because the original colour is supposed to be Acapulco blue. So it's had a respray somewhere along the line. Yes, yeah. it was resprayed, resprayed back in Washington, and Gino saw it on the internet and said, oh, I'm going to get this car, and eventually he bought it. And, yeah. Then I purchased it off him. Tell you the truth, the wife fell in love with it. The wife loved it. She reckons of all the cars that she's seen in Mustangs, the silver's different because you won't see a Mac 1 in silver anywhere in WA. She wanted it and she goes, oh, let's get it, let's get it. And so we made him an offer and he sold it to us. And it has, it stayed in the family. It's a very photogenic car. People want their photos with it. Everywhere yeah. you go, people want their photos with it, so. Yeah, yeah you, were, you were just mentioning earlier that, um, was it the Iranian women's Iranian Football Women's club? Soccer, soccer, soccer Club, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, that sounded like a funny story. We did VCC Club down at Scarborough Beach last year. And where we were parked was right in front of the uh, Observation City Hotel, or whatever it's called now. And the young girls all come out, and the soccer team, and they gathered around my car, and you'll see Gino's car after. And I don't think they've ever seen it. And they just wanted to have a look at it and they were having photos taken. So we gave them an offer. Would you like to sit inside and have your photo taken? For about an hour and a half, all I did was opening yeah. doors, closing <laughs> doors, opening doors. And they loved it. Yeah. They reckon it was great to actually let someone sit in their car and have their photo taken. It was fantastic. It was good to do. Yeah, well, they probably wouldn't get a lot of Mustangs in Iran. No, I don't think so. I would so. imagine. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> would have seen them on TV, of course. Well, we did a show. I think it was at the Hyde Park. Because the original antenna on the car no longer exists. Okay. Because because we can't rope them off, they won't let people walk around. Well, I don't want to say this too loudly, but it's women with handbags. Yep. And they swing around and it took out the, the antenna. And it's a teardrop antenna. And to replace it, it's just it's a phenomenal amount of money. Yeah, okay. So... The base is still the original base. I went to Super Cheap Auto. I grabbed another antenna, modified it, had a friend of mine turn up the base for it, 
and now it, the antenna doesn't get knocked off at car shows anymore. The numbers are still matching, and yeah. it's a one of one car. From what Gino tells me, that this car here is one of one because it's got the only Mac 1 that's ever made with intermittent wipers. Oh, okay. It's the that's only an one. Interesting spec to make it a one of one, though, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. All right, so the 69s are quite unique for the headlight setup in these, I believe. Apparently so. It's the only Mustang that came out with four round headlights. It's got the, the spotties here in the front, yep. but they're actually moulded into the grille where all the other ones are an aftermarket. Or it's an option to have them fitted after, but the Mac, the 69, the Mac 1, all came out with the four round lights. All right, mate, so what have you got there? Well, in, well I had the car stored at my house in 2014, 2015, because Gino needed places to store his cars. And we did the Mustang Roundup in 2015, and Shannon's was sponsoring this, this show. So Gino goes, bring the Mac 1. So I took the, must, the Mac 1 there, and it actually won it. Nice. It won the Roundup. It won the best, best Mustang in this guy's eyes, and he goes, this is it, and you've got it. And, well, befitting, I won the trophy in 2018. I own the car, so yep. I can't complain. So who took the trophy home on the day then? I did. Yeah. <laughs> mind you, <laughs> nice. mind you, it had, it had a sore spot with the owner at the time. I said, oh, the car's going back to my place, so is the trophy. So the car's actually actually won something, which is good. Yep. No, nice, mate. Well, it certainly deserves it. It's a beautiful car. Oh, she's nice. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's uh, pop the bonnet and have a look under there. We can do that. There's a big block 390. Wow. Big FE block. Beautiful. So this is the factory... Factory fitted engine? Yeah, yep. still matching numbers. All we've done to this is I put new set of Edelbrock chrome rocker covers on just to dress her up a bit. Nice chrome air cleaner so you can see the engine. The original one's just massive. I've still got that in the cupboard. Yeah. Put a new coil on it, new spark plug leads. It now runs a electronic ignition inside. Yep. It gives it a little bit more better spark. It looks huge in there doesn't it? It's like massive. There's, there's not a lot of room between the no. rocket covers and the um, shock towers in this is there? No, yeah. you want to try and change the spark plugs in it. I could imagine they'd be a, yeah, they'd be a struggle to get to, yeah. Yes, yes. there's a unique way to do it and I've been shown how to do it. And yep. Take one out, practice putting it in. Take it out, practice putting it in. Get okay. a new one and you can never get the new one in because yeah. you're scared you're going to drop it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, it is difficult but we change the spark plugs every now and again just to keep it running well. We've had a whole new radiator system being changed in it. It's had a new carby on it because the old carby just, it wasn't worth it for me to try and keep it going. To get the old carby made back to original standard, it, we put a new holly on it, which makes it run better. The old carby still sitting in the box. Have you gone internal on this one? Have you done anything internally with this one? Not, not yet. There is plans to rebuild the engine back to stock. Okay. And that's somewhere down the track. So not back to stock? Um, oh, one day I'm going to tickle it a little bit. Okay, yeah. I'm going to put a little cam in it, uh, leave the compression ratio the same, put a uh, performance, uh, Edelbrock performance manifold on it. But that's about it, just to make it drive. Just to flow a bit better, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to make it a little bit... It, Right, in its current form, as a cruiser, you can drive it all day. It doesn't get hot, runs smooth, doesn't have air conditioning, unfortunately. It's not a, a car you want to drive around in summer. But it drives all day. It goes all day. There's no, the wife doesn't complain that it's too hot. It's just a good cruising car. Yeah. Really reliable now, so. I mean, what sort of gearbox you got running behind it? It runs the original four-speed top loader. And the diff? It, original nine inch. Yep. Unfortunately, it's not a limited slip diff because the Mac ones don't come out with limited slip diff. Okay. It's the only Mustang, apparently it doesn't come out with a limited slip diff. And the hot pink battery. Oh yeah. I can guess, I can guess, but I'm sure it was something to it do was, with. It uh, was, a. well the battery died in it, so yep. we did a holler for a Marshall because we were going out for a breakfast with the Mustang Club. And Marshall come out straight away and they said, oh, We've got the battery that'll work the car, but it's pink. Yeah. And I said, well, can I ask you why the battery's pink? And he goes, well, it's to support women with breast cancer. So no problem. Yep, it's throw it straight in, yeah. Put it straight in. Spot on, mate. So, Perfect. Yeah. We should probably go and have a look inside. We can do that. All 
Oh, wow. This is lovely. Yeah. Everything in, the, everything in the inside here is as I purchased it from Gina. All I've done is redid the carpet on the lower part of the doors. Okay. Because it had some aftermarket speakers in it. It didn't look, weren't original, didn't look right. So I've had that reinstated. And you said the only other thing would be the shifter, wouldn't you? Is that yes. a new shifter? Brand new, yeah. Hurst, whole, mechan whole shifter from the gearbox upwards yep. is all new because they lose their tension. They've been thrashed. This thing here is nice but i have done a slight change to it because when they come or well, when the master hand when he drops in the second gear it's right down here okay and when you're going to push it up and same when you go to fourth so this one's been shortened a little bit and the angle has been pushed a little bit more further for me to it's more comfortable for me to drive yeah nice but as you can hear it it's nice and tight yep no oh, beautiful and the original radio face in here, is that one being Bluetooth or anything like no, that? No, no, that's as it is. Yeah. We don't listen to much the radio, we listen to more the engine. Noise. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, and the tilting steering wheel, forget, making it easier to get in and yes. out. Yes. That's always yes. been a feature with these American cars, hasn't it? Yes, and especially when you go to a show or something and people walk past and they see the car with a tilt steering wheel, I said, how do you drive the steering wheel like that? I said, oh, it's just, you just get used to it. <laughs> they don't realise that when you open the and close the door it, it tilts to allow easy in easy access because yeah. this car here has what they call deluxe deluxe interior and it has the, the back behind the seat drops down so when people used to go skiing in america they could put their skis through the car yeah okay so it's got that deluxe interior for that and the steering wheel's part of it yeah and that goes automatically with the door yep as soon it? as you once you've started it up and you and you go and park as soon as you turn your key off open the door the steering wheel will tilt yeah, right. Is that electronic or no, vacuum? No, it's vacuum, or? vacuum operated. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the tank's up underneath the front wheel on the driver's side and to make sure the hose is always on it. And yeah. As soon as you turn it off and open the door, it tilts. And you've got to be real careful because it's not the original steering wheel. The Mustang emblem, <laughs> when, it, when it jumped up, this would fly off. Oh, right. A noise hit you in the man parts so right okay it's now been siliconed on you say yeah you want to fix that yeah but as you said the rest of it is as we purchased the car yeah no and it's it's beautiful in here it really is yeah. all right well um let's go and check out the back end and see what's going on out there no problem sweet all right mate so this is the business end isn't it that fast back this is what mustangs were all about wasn't it that oh, yeah. sloping fast back that nice ass end of it. Yep, no, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, just enough room for your spare tyre and that's it. And a day pack by the look of it. <laughs> that's all it is. But hey, that's how to, that's how they made them. That's how we we try and keep them. It's part of its originality. Leave it like it is. It's not a, it's not really a show car where you want to you know like box it all out and hide everything. So like I said, I don't the boot just has the cleaning products when we go to a car show in the back and that's it. Yep. There's not even room to put an Esky in there. Yeah, just doing a, it's practical service and that's all it needs, eh? That's all that she's got to do. Yeah, no, awesome, mate. And now we've got the quad pipes sticking out the back there. Yep, that's orig all original and that's how they came out. So I've had half the, the exhaust and new mufflers put on it. Yep. But we're trying to re maintain the back end of the car to look like it's how it came off the showroom floor. But no, yeah. that's, that's the back end of it, and that's what she looks like. Hey guys, um, just come along, grab some merch, support the Aussie Garage channel. As you can see, great shirts, great hats, as Alio's modelling here. Good stuff, get onto it. All right, guys, I'm here with Gino. Now, Gino, let's talk about this car, mate. So, what is it? This is a 1970 Boss 302 Mustang. Um, bought it in from the States in 2006. Okay. And I've had it um, ever since. And uh, when you got it, it, obviously, did it look like this, or did you have to do a lot of work to it? It was, it was, it was funny because when it was advertised in the states, when I saw it, and it said, you know, original boss, blah blah blah, etc., and it said needs some work. And what you see in the photos and how they present the car is one thing. When it came, you know, rust times three, I think, is what the saying is. Yeah, I had to basically do a full restoration. So we put it on a uh, rotisserie. And Ray in Beckenham was the guy that did it for me, and yeah, it came out really, really good. And how long did the whole um, um, restoration take you to get done? Two years. 
Okay. Yeah, so okay, that's two, not too bad. Yeah, so that was, you know, full, like, we went right back to everything. So he'd done a, uh, he'd done a really good job on it. Yeah, perfect. So the colour of this car, what is it called? This is called Calypso Coral. Okay. It's very similar to the Australian Vermilion Fire because in the 70s and when, when Ford were using the colours, they got a lot of the colours from the States. So this is Calypso Coral and in Australia, Vermilion Fire, very, very similar. The, um, the stripes yeah. are reflective 3M. So if you photo it at night, yep. they actually shine white. Oh, okay. Yeah, white silver. So they're very bright. They don't, they don't look black at night. So yeah, the, the, that's black. That's painted black. But these stripes are what, 3M reflective black. Why did you buy this car? I think as I said in the previous interview, I told my wife when I turned 40 I want to get another car. And I didn't know what to buy. I was looking at Australian cars, American cars obviously. And I came across this and, and I thought, gee, that looks, you know, it had the Shea car. And it just looked really nice. And I thought, it's a two-door. Because the coupes were expensive back then. So I thought, I'm going to get it. And, and this is what started the craze again of getting back in 2006. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, and I know that Dan just talked to Ilya about the other Mustang you had and we sold to your brother, but yep. a little bit different, but kind of similar, aren't they? Kind yep. of models. The 69 and the 70 are exactly the same body shape as such. There's obviously differences at the front. You can see on the front with the 70s, they got just a single headlight with the, the shark flutes, I call them. And then the 69 had the four lights. And on the back, the 70s got the tail lights inserted into the tray and the 69, they outside of it so. okay so just subtle differences but otherwise difference, yeah. that's it yeah, yeah. Okay. and with the boss mustang um they made 7600 or thereabouts of the 1970 model and they changed a few things on this like you'll see other 69 and 70s have the cutout on the quarters the fake cutouts that took them off on the 69 70 bosses and they just filled them in and they took the emblems off the side and made it a basically like a bog stock, because this was getting ready to race in the Trans Am series, so they didn't want a lot of stick-ons on it. Yeah, and nice. when they did the 69, and I asked Larry Shinoda, what are you doing, what car are you working on? I said, I'm working on the boss's car. And that's how it got its name in 69 and carried through to 70, 71. Moffat used Moffat the 69. Used it. Yeah, yeah, he used yeah. the 69. And 70. he used that in the touring car series. Yeah, that's right. And they did race at Bathurst, but never in the Bathurst. Bathurst race, yeah. 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 Okay, so. And, and that car won, I think, out of 151 starts, won 101 times, 111 times or something. Okay, well, I reckon what we should do is uh, pop the hood, mate, and let's see what's underneath. No worries. Nice, okay, so it's a definitely a different setup than um, what the um, Elio 69 is. Windsor block with Cleveland heads, that's how they, they built the Boss engines. So to give it that little bit of extra horsepower and, uh, and breathe better. So yeah, all, all original. Um, I haven't done any mods to it as such. I've kept it as original as I could, obviously when we did the restoration, you know, down to the stickers, the, the markings on, on here and there and tags and that. So Perfect. I tried to keep it as original as possible. And behind the uh, motor at the moment, what are you running? It's running a top loader, this factory top loader. Okay. So it's got that in there and it's got a uh, LSD 9 inch. It's funny because the 69 didn't have the LSD, but this one does. Yeah, the boss came out with it. It's some There's some bosses that didn't have the LSD diff as well. Uh, depends on what you ordered from, from spec from the factory. Okay, it so a, it, it might have been an option. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So you could get W codes and all different things and that, drag packs on them and stuff like that. But this was a bog stock original like basic boss sort of thing other than the shaker scoop and the diff so yeah um, it's still running yeah. um twin point distributor so oh it's wow still, it's still, so it's still the yeah. old point system yeah, oh, yep. radio, yeah. okay yeah so yeah. And the other thing is I see that you got a signature in the corner there by Alan Moffat. Yeah, in, in 2010 we did a, uh, a show at Stanbridges and Alan Moffat came over and did a, did a signing and they asked us to bring our cars down so I brought the boss down. And yeah, when he came out and had a look he fell in love with it because it reminded of his 69 that he had. And um, he said, look I'll sign it for you mate and I said no problem. So he signed the, uh, under the bonnet and also on the interior for me. Oh perfect. I reckon we should uh, have a look at the interior mate. No worries. Oh wow, this has got heaps of leg room. Look at this. <laughs> it's not bad, isn't it? Nah, it's good. Like, I like this. So, her shifter. Her um, shifter from factory, so that's how the bosses came out. Perfect. I'm sitting on top of the top loader. No no console. I mean, you could no. order the boss with a console if you wanted. But yep. obviously this one didn't come with one, so, and you know, it looks all right without it. Very basic gauge, not even a taco. Wow, okay. On, yep. on, the, uh, on the 70, again, that was an, an option if you wanted to get a taco back on the 70 boss so no taco on this one nice and yeah it's just bog bog stock am fm radio which is is good yep. but uh, other than that yeah that's just how it is 
And the back seat, it's uh, only seats for uh, four people, of course. So only seats four people, small people in the back. All that we did when we when we did the restoration, that's still the original um, dash pad. We Perfect. didn't change that, so they had no cracks. It was really good nick. As I said, that's the original gauges. Um, I changed the the carpet. So nice. that, that was all that we changed in here. The seats were as they came from America. So whether they're the original, I'm not sure. But you know, from since 2006 when I've had the car, that was uh, they're there. The Perfect. Door trims, same from 2006. I haven't changed anything there. Nice. The only thing I changed on the doors was the speaker covers. One one was cracked, so I bought okay. two new ones of those. Um, other than that, the back seat is this. It's not a fold down back seat. It's it's pretty much is. That's yep. the uh, the original roof lining. I didn't change that. So. Let's go have a check out the boot. No worries. Oh, nice. Like, definitely a lot more room than what Elio's got. Um, and you were explaining that uh, because his is a fold-down seat, it's got the compartment, whereas yours doesn't. Correct. So, yours has a bit more space. Yeah, yeah. So, it's got that bit missing in the back there. So, okay. then it's already there for it. But with Elio's, that bit folds down and then you can get the longer bits in it. So. Now, you were telling me about there's a rod that goes into the side of the boot here just to keep it up because of the weight of the spoiler. What's that about? Yeah, so what, what they did with, when they fitted the spoilers to the back of the Mustangs, because it's such a small boot area, it, you'd lift the boot and it'd come back down. So what they did, they put this little rod in and that holds the boot up. So then you, when you stick your head in there, it's not falling no, down. Coming down on, on yeah, your head, yeah. okay. Yeah. I can see how you talk about the, the lights are actually inserted in. Yep. Um, they definitely look that way compared to the um, the 69 Mustang. Um, and the back end is a little slightly different with the like the way it's configured with the fuel tank and things like that as well. Yeah, yeah, so they, they did it with the, put the lights in, put a surround, whereas the 69, they just stick out and it's got a little surround around each individual light, yep. whereas this does the whole lot. On the Mac ones and other Mustangs, these are chrome, but on the Boss, they're black. The only thing they did wrong with this was the space saver spare tire. <laughs> yeah, that is that is a very interesting tire because when you're looking at that, you're going, "How's that supposed to fit on the bloody car?" <laughs> it's uh, it was only there for emergencies, I guess. So yep. I don't use it because I don't trust it. Um, it's only there because it's part of the restoration. So I left it in there, but I just got a normal GS rim and, and I use that if I ever get a flat, then at least I know I can yep. get home okay. So. Well, I'd be the same, I wouldn't be trusting that either. I'd be just going with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, it's that time again, isn't it? Cruise time, so That's let's it. get it. Let's go. swap this time around so this time your mustang's a bit more performance <laughs> and his is a bit more less performance yeah that's right yeah, yeah. so he's uh he's got the factory stock 390 big block yep. and i've got the obviously boss engine in this so yeah, yeah it's just yeah. a little bit more grunt than that so
it really does flick across, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> All right, guys, we've come to the end of the episode and stuff like that. We've taken a cruise. Magnificent cars. Love them to death. These things are brilliant. So thanks for having us out once again. Um, I think we're going to be back next month, but next month we're only going to do one vehicle. Yep. Um, and then we'll move on to the rest of the collection. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. See you next time. See you next time, Bill. guys. Thanks, Good, mate. Thanks again, Good guys. Man. Thanks, Appreciate buddy. it. No worries at all. Thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Appreciate Good it. Good luck with the future. So what's going on down there, Elio? What's that, mate? I'm cleaning up Gino's mess from his car. Oh, right. <laughs> how, oh, do you, how do you feel about that? I wouldn't call it mess. I'd call it leaking horsepower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, no worries. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.